hey everybody welcome back to another video and today we are going to learn about custom hooks in react so let's not waste any time and get started all right so jumping over here onto our screen inside of vs code as you can see i have a simple react application that does not include a lot in the main app component all we have is just a div that contains the heading and some text it has a width of 1200 pixels and a height of 800 pixels it looks something like this as simple as that so what we want is this width and height to change whenever i resize the window so i want sort of real time width and height and for that i have to use the browser or dom events now i can do this of course i can create some state over here and then inside of the use effect i can attach a function to that event the resize event and then whenever we resize i update the state we can do that but doing all that inside of this one component is going to fill up the entire component with unnecessary code that's when custom hooks come into play when you have a logic a piece of code that you don't want inside of a component to clutter it up and you're going to have a lot of pieces of logics that you don't want in a single component that's where you use custom hooks to separate your logic so what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and create a new folder called hooks inside of our src and let's create a new file called use window size.ts now ts because i'm in typescript you can use javascript as well all right so first up let's just export a function called use window size now because we are making a custom hook it should always start with use because any hook starts with the keyword of use so that's what we're going to name it use window size and we're going to return an object with the width of 1200 and the height of sorry height of 800 right and let's go over here and let's just use this custom hook so we can simply go ahead and say const and let's destructure we return an object so we are going to destructure it from use window size and so we get back the width and the height and let's just use those variables over here the width is going to be width and the height is going to be the height let's go back and we see the same values 1200 and 800 pixels but it does not change of course because we only return some static values we don't have any logic inside of it but essentially that's how custom hooks work now let's fill in the logic to make sure that whenever we resize the window these values change all right so we need some values to change and also we need that to reflect on the ui in that case we need some state so let's go ahead and create some state i'm going to call this window size and set window size of course that's setter function we have the use state now we return this part so let's just copy this and set this to the default value 1200 and 800 now instead of setting this to 1200 and 800 which might or might not be the user's size of the screen or size of the browser we can simply go ahead and say window dot inner width and window window dot inner height and let's go ahead and return just the window size object and it's going to be the same except that now when i refresh you see we have the inner width and inner height of the window but again it's not going to change because we don't have any event listener attached so now that we want these values to change we'll need to change this piece of state over here and for that we'll use the set window size so let's go ahead and create a function which is going to be handle resize let's call it handle resize this is simply going to set window size set window size to the newest values which again is going to be width the window dot inner width and height should be window dot window dot inner height now we are going to call this function at a different time so these things are going to change if you think that this and this will result in the same output that's wrong because this is going to be initial state so if the user loads up the website on this occasion this is going to be different you see and if the user makes it full screen and then loads up this is going to be different 
So this is the initial state and this is what we are going to call whenever it resizes. So how are we going to do it? So now we need the browser event, the resize event specifically. And to use that, we will need to use use effect. So let's go ahead and call use effect and pass in an empty array as the second argument because we only want to run it once. That's when the page loads. So we have the use effect hook. Now make sure to keep the use effect above everything else. It's usually a good practice to keep all the hooks above everything else. All right, so let's go over inside of the use effect and we're going to say document dot add event listener. And we're going to add an event listener for the resize event. And over here, we're going to say handle resize. We just pass in this function. We don't call it, we just pass it in. So once we add the event listener, we also want to remove it when someone navigates away from the page or when someone refreshes the page. That's when the component unmounts. And when the component does unmount, we actually want to remove this resize event listener that we added. Now doing that is very simple. Inside of the use effect, all you need to do is return an arrow function at the end, which is going to be the cleanup function. So when the component cleans up, we are going to run this function or react will run this function. It's going to be document dot remove event listener resize and handle resize. Now we hit save. Let's go back and refresh a couple of times. And so right now you see it does not change anything or it does not really work. OK, so the reason it does not work in our case is because I added this event listener to the document. We actually have to add it to the window. So let's say window dot add event listener and window dot remove event listener. So let's hit save and let's refresh. And you see now it changes everything in real time, just like we have it here up above. So it gives you the inner width and also it's going to change the inner height whenever you do that. So that's when custom hooks come in because you don't want all of this logic inside of your component. This makes everything very clean and easy to read. Now, this was a very simple example of custom hooks in React. And now I want to show you a more complex or something that will be reused in the real world sort of example. So coming back to our screen, let's remove this window size hook, whatever we had previously. And let's just put this to fetch custom hook. So usually when we fetch something in our React component, it's going to be through use state and then use effect. And inside of use effect, we do the fetch, which looks something like this. Now, what I just put in over here is a simple interface. It includes the ID, title and body. OK, so this is going to be the state posts and we just give it the type. It's going to be the post array by default. This array is going to be empty and we have this use effect that runs at the start of the page. We have this function called fetch post and we just call this function. This is going to go to this API URL, which is going to fetch some dummy blog posts and it's going to set posts to whatever data we get back. And we just display those posts over here. Now, looking at the result, when you refresh, it's going to take a little while, of course, to fetch the data and then show it to you because it runs on the web page itself. But all of this code, whenever you want to fetch, does not make any sense. Plus, if you want any loading state, this is going to be some more code that you need to put in. So you need to have a loading state again and you set loading to true and then set loading to false once you have finished data fetching and you also have to handle errors. You can take all of this and make it a custom hook. So let's actually see how this custom hook looks like. All right, so this is how this use fetch hook looks like. Now, now don't worry if this entire thing confuses you. If you're not familiar with TypeScript, you should just ignore this part and this part and this part. All right, so don't care about all that if you're not using TypeScript. But in simple words, this is going to be the interface of our fetch state. So we are going to have some state and we have the type of whatever type the user passes in, right? So over here, we had the post array. That's what we want our data to be. So we give it post array, which is going to go over here as fetch state. And our data is going to be either null or whatever type we pass in. So it's basically for better type intelligence. So we simply have a state with three items in it, data, loading and error. If you go over here in the use effect, again, same thing as we did over here, but it's abstracted away into a custom hook now. 
So we have a use effect where we have a fetch data function. Firstly, it's going to set state to whatever the default value is, which is the null loading true and error null like this. And then we're going to fetch the data using the fetch API and the URL comes over here. Okay, so we give it the URL. And if the response was not okay, now here's where we also keep error handling in place. So if the response was not okay, if it was not 200 or 201, for example, that's when we throw the error. And whenever we throw the error, it goes over here in the catch block and the catch block, we just set state data null loading false. And we set the error to the error dot message. Finally, if it was all okay we just get the data as json we set state with the data loading false error null and we call the fetch data function and we have this use effect run every time the url changes which is essentially once but if we don't pass in this is going to is still going to work but it's an external variable so we still pass it in in the end we just return the state now let's see how we can use this and it's going to be very simple so we are going to say const and we're going to destructure something we're going to use use fetch use fetch and we provide it with our url let's give it that and we also give it the type so over here it's going to be the post array so we just give it the post array now if you're not using typescript ignore this part so we get back three items we get back the data we get back loading and we get back error so we don't need this anymore we don't need any of this this data is going to be posts that we had previously. So let's just say it's going to be posts. Now this can be, if you look over here, the type of this can be either post array or null, right? So whenever it starts fetching, it's going to be null. And if there is any error, this is going to be null. But if it successfully fetches all the data, it's going to be the post array. So in that case, what we can do is we can just say, if posts exist only then go ahead and render this part and we also have the loading and error which we can easily use over here so so what we can do is let's take this out that was just for demo but over here let's cut this and let's say if there is if we have posts then we are going to show this ul but if we have any loading then we are going to show a loading spinner how do we do it Right now, I'm just going to have a P tag with the text of loading and let's just say text center. And in the end, if there is any error, we just, we are just going to show the error message. So let's just say error. Let's say it's going to be text center again and text red 500. All right. So we are not using these imports. Let's take them out. Let's hit refresh. You see, we get the loading state and then we get our data just as we did before now let's demonstrate any error so let's say i have uh, this so let's say i change this from posts to some other malformed url in that case you see we get the error of 404 let's change it back to what it was before now this is also a very sim now this is also a very straightforward example right in real world the custom hooks will get more and more complex as per whatever the requirements are this is very bare bones and straightforward, which simply fetches the data. And you can use this use fetch now in anywhere inside of your app to fetch data from any place. That's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some value and how you can use custom hooks inside of your React apps whenever you need them. In simple words, again, it just abstracts away the logic from your component inside of a function which you then use as a hook that starts with use. I also wanted to show you two websites, which I really like. So if you go over to use hooks TS over here, this is a very cool library that includes many custom hooks that are also made for next year. So for example, you have use counter, right? You can handle all the counter stuff in here. You have the count set count, and you also get the code for that particular custom hook, the entire code. And it also goes into more complex stuff. Like let's say you have used local storage, right? Using the local storage with a custom hook. And if you go ahead and look over at the code for the hook, it actually is very, very long. Again, this also works in server side stuff. So when you have Next.js or Remix, that's where it also works really well. And another website is this use hooks website, which is by ui.dev. If you just look at their hooks, they also have a very good number of hooks that you can use. And they are similar, but again, they have a better UI and they also show a demo, but it doesn't really matter. Use whichever 
suits you. These are just small libraries that contain a bunch of functions inside, inside of them. So I hope all of that makes sense and you enjoyed this video as well. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new and you enjoyed it. Share it to your friends. And finally, thanks for watching.